All right, let's check your file. Dad said he wanted it shorter than we did last time. So we better look that up. What did we do last time? One guard down all over, two guard, teddy bear head, trim up all over, no fleas. One guard, body, trim up, face. Okay, you guys out there already? Did you guys get a note? Wow, man, this is crazy. I just feel like we've been hanging out all day. Like, what? Okay, hold on, let me adjust. So I got my hands full. He's right here in my arms. This is the guy who came in. He had fleas. I had to send him home. Who saw that video? That's my new thing. And I don't care if you don't like it. I don't want anybody getting fleas from my facility, and that's my new thing. So if we have fleas, it's like, whoop, stop what you're doing. He's got to go now. And uh, I did not follow my own rules the other day because the last dog that came in had fleas. I went, and guess who it was? It was Jackson. So Jackson has a lot of health issues, so he brought fleas, and I didn't, um, I had a, like a, so every now and then there's going to be that case by case. He was the last dog for the day. He had fleas. I worked him in the same day because of his health issues. So there's just things that you're going to have to do. But if you have other clients and you don't want to deal with fleas, then you have to make some changes and deal with, set your requirements, right, and do your best to follow them. If I had another dog coming in, Jackson would have had to leave, and there would have been the flea charges because fleas are very expensive, and they're, the chemicals used to kick fleas are usually dangerous and um, harsh. So your business, your way. So figure out what you want to do and then set the stage for how you want to handle it. And as he's so calm in my arms, but he on the floor, he's wild running around. So, David, you're missing out on a Yorkie groom. Um, okay, Christine, are you out there? Look at this Yorkie. Anyways, he came in with fleas at one time. Did you guys see that video? Did you guys see that? I was like, oh, he's got to go. And then dad gets back. He's probably watching right now. Dad gets back and I was like, look, we're looking for this flea for like 15 minutes. I was like, the reason why I called you is because he had to go. I didn't call you so we could look for the flea, you know? We couldn't find it. I could not get the flea back to, um, to where we could see it. And I was like, you guys actually have to go. Uh, so he did. He had to go do the flea thing, visit the veterinarian, kick the fleas, rebook within 10 days. So um, he just walked in. He said... He seemed to have grown pretty fast this time, and uh, July, let's just go back a minute, okay, July 31st, one guard down the back, tin neck, because it was matted, hand scissor the face, that's just tidying up the face, it's not like I'm a hand scissor pro, because we all know that I'm not, and I don't advertise to be a hand scissorer. So October 9th, one guard down the body, trim up the face, had fleas, that we found after the bath, okay? And then October 16th, finished the groom that we started, one guard down, all over, two guard, teddy bear head, which I usually trim up the face, so we actually went shorter on the face that day. And then trim it all up. So, we didn't do anything different, but Dad just said, if you're listening, Dad just said he grew a lot faster. So, I said, when you say that, what does that mean? Right, because Dad's like, he grew a lot faster this time. Uh, it could mean that you, not you, but in general, um, the client thinks that you did not do a shortcut last time. It could mean, if, if that was the case, when the client's walking out, that's when the client should say, he doesn't look short, right? Right then, so you could fix it. So he didn't say that when he left, or we would have fixed it. Then the next thing that you could uh, try to figure out what that means it, in, when he said he grew out a lot faster is, you want him shorter this time than he was last time. And he said, yes, that's exactly what I mean. Okay, so this time we're gonna go one guard shorter because we're using attachment, their guards or attachment combs. So we are using a guard on the blade, right? And we're gonna use it on a 10 blade. So we're gonna use a guard shorter than the one guard, okay? So to me, that would be a two guard. Two guard is going to be shorter than, the, don't try to figure it out. Just learn what your guards are and memorize the numbers and look at them because you can see which one leaves the hair longer by putting them side by side. The bigger the metal part, the longer the hair is left. So, my computer's talking to me. You guys have that problem? So we're gonna do a two guard all over the body. I'm gonna go ahead and do, since he said it grew out, I'm gonna do a two or a four guard on the face. Round up the face and do our regular stuff, okay? So here we go. Okay, this is our last pet to go live today. 
And then we've got to wrap it up, do a bunch of paperwork, get ready for some packages that I need to send out today because Christmas is on its way. And then we're going to paint a house. I might go live on uh, DD Croy. If you're not a part of the DD Croy channel, you can go subscribe there if you want to watch that real estate stuff that we're going to be getting into. I've been a real estate agent, so I think five years now. i got to look at the date. But uh, it's something else that I love doing, and it's a backup plan to my grooming. So I hope if you're a groomer, if you don't have a backup plan, create one. If it's too late for a backup plan, call me if you need help with your decision making. And we can do a coaching class, but uh, have a backup plan. Something less physical than grooming for your end of life career. Okay? All right, here we go. He's just so calm in my arms right now. He's just like totally just relaxed. Okay, so I gotta put you up here, buddy. Oh, I just popped my elbow. Oh, you wanna lay down? Okay, you can lay down. Are you, are you trying to take a nap here? This is not nap time. I don't know who gave you the nap briefing, but nope. Why are you so comfortable right now? Oh, huh? why are you so comfortable? What are you doing here? It's so comfortable. You look so comfortable. You wanna take a nap? Okay, here we go. Let's put this on. That way I don't lose ya. Okay, we'll click you here. It's not very tight at all. Doesn't even get him to stand up. Okay, let me remove all this. Okay, let's get our go uh, goggles on. Let's get our gloves on. Get our gloves on here, buddy. Me and you gaming, where are you at and what are you doing, man? What are you, are you do grocery shopping for me? Because I really need some help with that since I don't have time to grocery shop. Thank goodness I still have some toilet paper. I don't have a toilet paper problem. Hey, Lisa, I'm glad your phone got restarted. Sometimes that's all you need to do. Okay, here we go. Look at you. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, my goodness. Okay, he has the longest name I have for a pet client. His name is Fitzgerald, okay? So uh, I hope it's okay, Dad. I might just start calling him Fitzy. Fitzy. Yeah, I think he approved. Fitzy? Yes, Fitzgerald. Just so long, isn't it? Can I call you Fitzy? Fitzy. Okay, here we go. All right, Fitzy. Come here. You want to lay down while I get everything ready to go? Your dad probably thinks I'm a nutcase because he's probably out there watching right now. Okay, guys. Let's clean our blade off here. Get your tin blade. I'm using a ceramic at this point. Okay. Get our, we were going to do two guard, weren't we? Okay, so we do that. Let's spray that, spray this. Okay, now. sleep on us or what man okay so I've done his back right looking good here now, we gotta get him to stand up to do the rest. But I might flip over to like a foreguard to do the long scraggly stuff, we'll see. But I'm gonna go ahead and get, oh, I was gonna do a two guard on his face anyway, why not? Okay, let's try this. Okay.
hold that ear up out of your way here, okay? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Okay, we're gonna scissor the rest. Just get your shape there, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and change the foreguard to go right up under his, like his legs and stuff like that. Get your foreguard. Now we need him to stand up, so we're going to go ahead and get him to stand up. Got to stand up, buddy. Okay, good. Good. There you go. Good boy. Oh, yeah, that, that little short face like that is going to be real cute. Come under the tummy with your foreguard. I mean, this is what I want to do, right? Okay. If you don't have these guards, man, my two guard and my four guard are my most popular in the haircuts that I do. Not for everybody, just mine. So if you, if you see that the haircut is kind of like how you want it, then the two guard and four guard, you'll use them a lot. What's sad is that for so long in the beginning of my grooming career, um, even working at PetSmart, you know, they didn't teach us how to use the guards. They taught us like scissoring. And I had another groomer that was working for me for a little while. Sadie, I love you, I miss you. She's a really sweet person. She showed me a lot about the guards and I was like, wow, what have I been doing wrong this whole time? I'm like, wow, I've been hand scissoring this whole time. If you wanna be a show groomer, by all means, hand scissor. But if you wanna be an everyday groomer, grooming everyday pets that are just gonna get dirty and come back and they might be tangled up, then you wanna be able to move quickly, you know? It depends on what you're trying to do. You want to sell BMWs? You want to sell Porsches? You want to sell Jaguars? I mean, what do you want to do? We're all doing something different. And then who are you looking for to groom your dog? Okay? All these different things are all different. We're all not the same. You don't care how long your dog's at the groomer? You need your dog at the groomer all day because you're working. It just depends on what you're looking for, right? Do you like vanilla or do you like chocolate? I mean, what kind of donut do you like? I mean, we're, really? We're not all doing the same thing. And we all don't need the same thing. My dog's young. He doesn't need, I don't care if he's in the cage for six hours. My dog's old. He cannot be in the cage for six hours. I mean, it just depends on what it is you're looking for. So since I'm using a four guard here, I'm kind of just lightly skimming everything. I'm not doing a heavy handed. So it's just like as if I was using a two guard, just lightly go through everything. Check our heat, change our blade. Okay. Come in here. Oh, you need to stand up, buddy. Let's get the mini. I think he will fit the mini just fine. Let's check it out. Up, up, up. The proof is in the pudding. Okay, there you go. Yeah, that's the work. Just some support in here so I can get his tail and everything under here, his tiny and all that, without him sitting down. And he's still intact, so you want to be really careful there. You want to be able to see what's going on.
Feel the knee, pay attention, watch the knee. Go this way then? Hold on, my bad. My bad. So some of you guys know me pretty well, right? And um, you guys feel really comfortable, trust me. Is that true? Some of you guys have like, been with me for a long time, been watching and hanging out with me. You guys trust me? I gotta tell you something, I gotta tell you something. I'll tell you something real quick. I'm so sorry, Donna. So there's a, so I get a lot of calls, right? I mean, I mean, you guys have no idea. And I finally watched, uh, what was it, um, The Prophet? Have you guys been watching that show? It's kind of like The Shark Tank, but The Prophet. So he goes around, he buys businesses that are kind of failing or close to failing. And he helps them grow their business before they fail and close down their doors. Have you guys who watched The Prophet? So last couple time, last couple nights I've been watching The Prophet. Late at night. I mean, this is like trying to fall asleep stuff. And he said a few things. He's like... He's like, you can't do all this on, this is what he keeps saying, he keeps saying, you can't do all this on your own, or some t at some point, something's going to give, right? And I've been doing this on my own, David, with some help, don't get me wrong, he's helped me, especially with YouTube, but he doesn't, he's not the bulk of the business, he doesn't email you, he doesn't check emails, he doesn't check text messages, I am still, Didi's here, and all the videos for many years is, is just Didi, so you look at, uh, and I'm a realtor too, so... I'm so busy, and when I say I'm busy, it's an understatement. Like, you have no idea. So, we uh, anyway, we got a surprise coming for you, a different kind of video. But while I tell you this story while this Yorkie's hanging out with me. Right, Fitzy? Yes. You like that? You don't mind that, Fitzy? No? You want to lay down, though? Okay. We're, we're, we're kind of going to. I'll let you lay down a little bit while I chit-chat. How about that? Yeah? I'll let you lay down a little bit. Okay. There you go. You can lay down now. I'll move this out of your way. So I'm real, anyways, the whole point is I'm really busy. I, and the prophet, he says this thing over and over. He goes, you can't do it on your own. If you keep trying to th think you can do ordering supplies, marketing, all these things, checking emails, social media, blah, blah, blah. He's like, you can't do it all on your own. If you think that's going to work out, it's going to, something's going to hit the fan. And someday, some point, something's going to break, right? So there's not even enough time in the day for me to reply to Facebook, social media, Instagram, like all the messages that are coming through, text messages, emails. And so those of you who raise your hand, if you got an email response from me, if you got a phone call back from me, if you got a text message back from me, it takes time for me to do that. And you actually got my physical time uh, without, maybe even not, without any trade-off. I got no benefit from it. You might have gotten the full benefit from it. So you can say, yes, I got an email from you. Yes, um, you know, yes, I got a text from you. Yes, you responded to me. And there's no financial benefit for Didi. So those of you who think that things are not free, they're free. A lot of it is free. I give out a lot of free things, including time. But this one story I have to say, this story is silly. It's funny, but it's been in my head for a long time. So this, it's been like maybe 10 months ago. So I get a lot of phone calls, a lot of voicemails, right? Because while I'm grooming, do I pick up the phone? No, I don't. So I get a, this lady, she called me to ask me some questions about her dog or whatnot. She leaves me a voicemail. I don't know her. I'm getting no benefit from it. The question is from her. The question is for her. The answer is for her. Okay. So I get off work. I get off work at like 9.30 or 10 o'clock at night. I think I made her phone call at like 10.30 at night. I left her a voicemail. I said, hey, this is Dee Dee with My Favorite Groomer. Thanks a lot for your call. I'm just calling you to reply to your, your question. I said, Le left her an answer. I said, if you have any whatever, give me a call back. So the next day, she calls me back, and she goes, if you ever call me back, she yelled at me, if you, f and she cussed at me, ever call me back at 1030 at night, blah, 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 blah. You know what I just did? I just deleted it. And I thought to myself, 
not everybody knows how busy I am. They see a video and just think like, I guess I'm just sitting there waiting for a text or phone call, right? No, there's a lot going on. And I'm not mad that she was yelling at me, but I still will call people at 10 o'clock at night because guess what? I just got off work. And so if you have, if you have an, a question from me, and I call you at 10 o'clock at night. I don't know that, you know, if someone gave their time away to me for free, that I would cuss at them and yell at them. But in my head, that's, a, I'm just telling you guys a little story. Like, are you kidding me? She like totally yelled at me and cussed at me. I have to go back and see if I still have that voicemail. I will totally, we're going to do a clip by clip of voicemails that I've gotten over the years. And you guys can, uh, what David, you're going to do is like, yeah, try not to laugh. And some of these folks, man, I mean, tit for tat, right? I knew he wanted to lay down. But she just cussed me out and yelled at me. And I hate to say it, I said, at least she got a call back. Like, I at least gave her my time and called her back and gave her an answer. <laughs> oh, my God. She said, if you call me at 1030, and I just said, delete. I just didn't even, I was like, what? How dare you? I was like, at least you call, got a call back from me. I don't know one YouTube person that I wrote that called me back or texted me back or messaged me back. Sometimes I would be like, hey, I've been watching your YouTube video. I, I love the camera you're using. What are you using? Psh, no answer. So when somebody is like capable of writing me back or texting me back, I'm just like, wow, you know, that's awesome. <sighs> Anyways, you get you ready to do your face? Let's do your face. Let's do your face, Fitzy. I just thought I'd share that with you because y'all know how busy I am, man. My core right here knows how busy I am. Well, maybe we should wash his face first. He's got a lot of eye boogers and stuff. Okay, so let's trim up the face around. Let's trim up. Let me think here. Let's come around. Let me see here. Let's pop that out like that. Okay. We come up like this. Just let his jaw rest on your wrist here, your palm. Okay. Really want to shave all that out, don't you? I think I have shaved it out. Will you let me shave this out? Okay, let's see here. There we go. That's nice right there. Okay. You got to have them looking up, so we might have to tighten this up because you it, you can't do an even cut if they're looking down. Okay, you got to look up for me. Come here. Look up. Some Yorkies have this, this they lay their head down a lot. You'll see that they're flat right there. All their hair is real flat. Remember, this is just the rough end, so we got to come back here anyway. Kind of come angle that back like that. We'll come back to it after the bath. Check it out first. Okay, and let's do our pads right now. Yeah, but that made me really laugh. Don't you ever! I was like, really? I was like, oh, you're so lucky, man. I called you back. I made the time to call you back. Some people work so hard, right? Let's do his pads real fast with my bravura. Da, da, da. Don't, 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 let me see, don't get upset, okay, go up for me, okay, I'm going to bring this in here, Please don't interrupt. It's not your dad, dude. It's just me. I can't say hi to you. Are you what are you doing? I can't say hi to the Yorkie. Oh my goodness, David and his Yorkie. That's not even your dad. What are you doing? Oh my goodness. Look at him. He's so happy. You want him to bathe you? What the? Oh, you're so happy. 
Okay, this is not a good situation. You're gonna get yourself all okay, hairy. I gotta go, I gotta go. What do you mean? That's it? Oh my goodness. I don't like it. I, I don't like it. You can't pick up your shopping list. My shopping list? Well, you gotta push mute then. Okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So what the? Serious? Look how happy he is! Like what? Do you remember David? Huh? Huh? Look how happy he is. Look how happy he is. He's so happy! <laughs> You're such a goof. You're such a goof. Is, um, is this actual Yorkie Yorkie, right, like no mix? Where are you going, buddy? It's like a Maltese a little bit. Mm. I think it might be the tail. Fitzy, 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 don't do that, Fitzy, don't do that, please, don't do that, thank you. Okay, great, I'm done. Okay, hold on, you want to lay down? Come on, let's go to the tub, I'll move you guys in just a second. Come do some grocery shopping for me, but I mean, I don't have a lot to do. I just have some of the stuff I kind of need, I need, you know what I mean? Okay, let's prep this area real fast. You need anything on me to bathe them real quick? No, 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 we're good. Okay. We're good. I'm on track here. Go ahead. I'll, I got this. I got this pool. Can you do a thing thing? Ding, ding. Oh, you can do it on your end? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look how cute you are. We gotta get those eye boogers washed. Washed off. Alright, I'll see you in a bit, okay? Appreciate ya. No problem. There's some other stuff. I just. If I see anything that I think you need. I'll no, no, no! Don't, don't. Just Try use it. your telekinesis to contact me. Oh my goodness.
they do your face first. This is so important here, you guys. Bring you guys a little closer here. Bear with me here. All right, so we just got it wet. That's all we did. I'm gonna get in here, hold the jawbone here, and just, as long as it's wet, it'll help, okay? If it's really matted, it might not work that well. You're gonna have to get it and then shave it after. But his is not a matted face, okay? So all this out here. You want to get all this kind of stuff out, okay? All that stuff. Okay? That's why. Okay? So this nozzle is so awesome. You get to come up real close here. Without all the spraying and everything, right? Back here, it's got some food, so you don't want to see this. Kind of dry. So get yourself a little small hand towel. And turn around. Just use this. Get it off. You skip it? No, you don't. You don't skip that. It's gross, but it needs to be done. If you don't like to do the bathing of the dog, you're not doing the right career. You don't want to do it right, you need to move on. You gotta wash that bum bum just like you would have to wash a human bum bum. There's no like, oh, it's too dirty, I gotta skip it. Ooh, no, wash it. There's no skipping it. Oh, it's so gross, I don't want to look at it. No, you can't leave it there. Nozzle cover on. Look up, 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 up. Hold the jaw.
Okay, let's get a towel. Oh, did you almost fall down? Did you fall down? Did you fall down back there? Look how small you are. Yeah, you definitely need a dental cleaning. We keep talking about it. I don't know. I told your dad. I told him he needed a dental cleaning. Yes, I did. Look how cute his face is when he's short like that. So cute. We haven't gone that short, I don't think, on his face, but it looks pretty cute. He looks young, right? Makes him look young. Okay, stay there a second. All right, guys, so before I dry him, check this out. These are actually handmade by Betty Dyer. They're going on my website today. Uh, there might not be a bunch of pictures just yet, but look at the workmanship of Betty Dyer's harnesses. These are all handmade here in Florida, uh, here in, in Florida by Betty Dyer. Betty, your workmanship is amazing. Some of the best harnesses I've ever seen. Look at this. So we're going to see, like this size is a medium. For a small dog medium, right? So check this out. So you put this here. And you put this around here. Is that not the cutest little thing ever? Look, look at this harness. So her little Maltese's all have harnesses and she's able to just like pick them up with it. You know, it's just so handy. And it fits them really well. And then there's Velcro so you can kind of overlap the Velcro and make it even tighter than that. So if you're wanting a harness like this, I know you're all clean right now, aren't you? If you want a Velcro harness like this, handmade by Betty Dyer, they're gonna be on my website today. Look at this, I have a bunch of different colors and uh yeah, man you're not gonna be you're not gonna be upset by it at all it's just it's just gorgeous this is all handmade by betty dyer and you guys saw she's a like a super fan and she uh, has made so many things for my favorite groomer support her by ordering them and they'll be on there soon i think i've got leashes on there right now i haven't even finished the colors and stuff yet but betty i got so much stuff from our visit so i'm trying to post them all on there Thank you, Betty Dyer. All right, let's get a blow dry going. I'll put those on as soon as I can after the feed, okay? It'll be like, uh, I'll do like a group photo because I have so much to post. There's actually some leashes, collars, 
harnesses, um, the neck thing, I can't even think of it. The bandana around the neck, she's handmade. I mean, she's got some really great skills. Face masks. Okay, so they'll, they'll go on today under the leashes and collars. The harness will be under there. Here we go. The first speed. So if you have a golden doodle or something like that, my dryer, this dryer that I have and use is the best. time we do the brushing and everything, I'd like to see that the face is uh, drier and we're working with it. All right, let's move this stuff first. Okay, here we go. out there, especially that blue, aggressive blue healer mix. Man, we used to shave him down. You guys remember that? He's mean, too. Mean and strong. Look at his face. Look at his face, man. What is, what is going on here with your face? Do I need this? Maybe. Let's get over here. Alrighty. What do we want to do now? Get it all brushed down. How about that? Fitzy's so sweet, huh? Fitzy. Fitzy. <laughs> You're so sweet. Yes, you are. You guys remember watching that really aggressive Yorkie when the pet parent had a very long beard and all that? Do you remember that? Who watched that one? Did 
You guys remember that, Yorkie? Oh, gosh. We, I never saw him again. The mean one? Very rarely do we see a mean Yorkie. I think sometimes what people say on YouTube, I think the comments, I mean, I think that might, that might drive people away. Because some people are so cruel. Some adults, and then adults, uh, some of the children of those adults, and then some children in general, and some adults, so some of the people are so cruel in the way they speak. Or type, I should say, because I don't know that they would actually really speak that out of their mouth. If you saw them face to face, it's just because they're not face to face, right? Let me see. Let me see. Oh, there's a tangle there. I gotta get it. I gotta get it. Who can answer that lady? Oh, how, why do I wear these gloves? Thank you, Ash. Thank you, Ash, for paying attention. Appreciate that. Did you uh, make sure you guys go watch the splinter video? It's real. The issue, the problem with splinters and groomers and I, barbers, cosmetologists is real. Woodworkers, who else? Who else gets splinters? You can do a couple things. You can do forward here and what I call like do your sunrise right there, your rainbow cut. You can do that. We can split it part in the middle here. He has a natural part in the middle. You can do that. It's up to you. It's really up to the groomer because that's the artist, right? All right. Uh, we did a two guard, so let's bring our two guard. Well, we did a four guard kind of around the neck, right? Yeah, let's do that. You know I'm talking to you guys, right? You guys are a part of what I'm doing here, okay? <laughs> Come on here. Let me see here. Let me get, let me get this tighter. Go up. So I got my four guard here under the neck. You're not going to be able to tell because then the hair grows backwards here anyway. Okay. Up. Get it, go backwards and lay it down. Okay, we're gonna come and do the rest of this foot action right here with the seven or 10. Let's get our broom. You guys don't have a baby broom, you need one. They're so handy. It's part of everything I do, isn't it? I got some really cool turquoise bamboo ones right now on the website. Oh my gosh, they're so pretty. I only have limited. When I see them, I pick them up and they're not, they're not, they're never always there. We'll come back with a seven here. Get our two guard back. Which blade am I using under my two guard, you guys? Who knows the answer to that? Which blade am I using under my two guard? Thank you, Jennifer Torres, awesome. Thank you for listening. Thank you for paying attention.
Okay, get your seven blade out now. Which one leaves the hair longer? Seven blade or ten blade? Who knows the answer? Oh, Melissa P's wrong. Which, the question is, which, look at you guys, you guys have no idea what's going on. Which, out of seven blade and a ten blade, which blade leaves the hair longer? Seven blade. So, ten blade is the shortest, safest. You guys write that for me. Write it, write it in the chat. Ten blade is the shortest, safest. So the tin blade, look, the tin blade has way more teeth, less metal. Look at the difference in the metal. This is thicker metal, which means there's more space from the body to the end of the hair cut. So you're going to leave the hair longer with more metal in the way, right? The metal is in the way. So right, tin is the shortest, safest. Okay, 10 is the shortest, safest, which means seven cannot be the shortest. Seven is right behind the 10 blade. Okay, so 10, seven. This is how, this is how I carry my blades. There's other blades, a 30, 40, 15, those types. We're not talking about those. We're talking about the two that I use the most, 10, seven. The question is, which leaves the hair the longest? Seven blade compared to the 10. Not all these other blades. I'm talking about two blades here. Don't get mixed up. We're just talking about this. Out of the 10 and the 7, the 7 leaves the hair longer than the 10 because the 10 is the shortest, safest, in Dee Dee's opinion, to use. Shave downs, 10 blade. Okay, short, short summer cut, 10 blade. Military buzz cut, 10 blade. Okay, 10 blade. 10 blade is the shortest, safest. Seven blade leaves the hair longer than the 10. So the 10 I used here. Sanitary, private area, sanitary on the rear end. Seven blade, we're gonna use it on the legs a little bit, skim, 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 kind of come down, touch up this stuff here hanging, but not directly on the skin, okay? All right, so I, now I know that, so that, that helps some of you guys out there. <laughs> 10, shortest, safest. Okay, okay, don't call. Well, skim, skim, skim now. Skim, 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 wrap it up. You can skim here or you can get the scissors out. Which one do you want to do? I'm going to skim first and then tiny bit wrap up on the scissors. Skimming here is going to allow me not to have to hand scissors because I don't want to hand scissors. That's not what I'm here to do. That's my choice. Oh, unless I have an amber alert. Okay, hold on here, buddy. Skim, skim. You're gonna have to come touch up with scissors anyway, but I'm just not wanting to hand scissor the whole leg. I, I have, this is a shortcut. You wanna hand scissor? By all means, hand scissor. It's your grooming, right? Okay, here. Oh, sorry about that. Brian, we're almost done. Don't worry. Casey's watching out there. No, it's a uh, Amber Alert. That's a Texas Amber Alert right there. Weather's great right now. Okay. Come over here. Melissa P knows all the cuts though. Seven reverse, ten, oops, sorry, ten down, seven down. <laughs> but that seven blade is gonna leave the hair longer, Melissa P. All right, let's get our scissor. I'm gonna do a point tip, 8.5. This is a large slicker blush, by the way. 
I sell the large and the small, but the large all the way every time. You can get your shaper brush too. Amber Alert is when a they're looking for a child. You guys didn't know that? It was developed from the child named Amber, right? You can look and Google it, look it up. So when someone's been kidnapped or missing or whatever and they're looking for that child and they know the vehicle and all this stuff they'll say it's an amber alert it's like goes across to all cell phones or iPhones or whatever so that we can all now like look around look at the vehicles passing by stuff like that before that child gets out of state or something like that See, on the feet, though, I use the point tip, the point scissor, because that way you can actually grab that hair up. If you use the bubble tip on the feet and everything, you won't be able to do that. That bubble area will get in the way, but the bubble tip is great for, you know, the face, safer. Nothing's 100%, but it's safer than if you're a beginner scissor user. having that bubble tip and even a knot if you just want to be safer around you never know when a dog's gonna react you don't have that there's not a warning system You hear music over there, so do I. Okay, let's get this. Anything else? There you go. There you go, stay there. Check the tail out here. What are we doing back here? So I like to envision the dog pooing, and anything in the way, I like to take it off. Okay? Okay, here we go. Let it come here. So when he poos, this is all in the way right here. So I'm going to tidy this up here like this. If you don't know what I mean, go watch a dog poo, okay? This will be up here like that, and this will all be in the way here. Okay, we're coming up to an end here.
Okay. Come up here and do check this face here. May I see? May I see here? Fitzy. Fitzy? Right here. There you go. That, that's not you. That's a neighbor. That's a neighbor. That's a neighbor. No, no. No, no. We can't do that. No, no. Not, not with scissors in my hand. No, no. This is serious stuff. Okay? Steady. Get those out of there. Let his jaw kind of rest right down on your palm. Come over this way like this, hold it. Dot 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 good. Let me see. I gotta have you look up more here. Let's go up. He's really listening to those folks next door. Okay. No, 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 no. Try to kind of No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Come here. Don't do it. Don't. Don't do it. Okay, hold on. See, I had to let go. Round that up like that. <laughs> Stay. We're not done yet. Stay. Stay. You see? Over here. A lot of moving back and forth, isn't it? Yeah, I'm tired too. Back and forth, back and forth. Over there, over here.
Okay, right here, when he yawned, I saw all this black stuff right here. I'm going to cut this off. Pull that lip back. Look at it. Yeah, I'm going to check this side. Not much over there. But all this hair is going in his mouth right here. Okay, we got to fix that. All right, get your bubble tips out. Okay, we want this hair right here. I'm going to show you his teeth, and then you're going to understand what I'm talking about. This hair right here. Okay. Here, this hair going, that's wet. You see it's wet right there? I'm going to take that out. You're going to see his teeth in a minute. I'm going to show you. Okay. This is wet right there. All this wet stuff. If you can haggle it, get it out of the mouth. Bet, bet, bet. Bet, bet, bet. Good. Good. Let me see. Let me see. He might lick it back in there in a minute. Yeah, see here? Let me see. wet in there like this stuff. Are right, you guys ready to see this? Here we go. Let's look at the teeth. Can you see? Look at the teeth, okay? This is very important that we get a dental done, okay? It's got the puppy tooth in there as well as the regular tooth and all that gunk in between. That's just gonna affect both teeth, okay? Like, rot them out, okay? So here, let me see here. See this side? Can you see that? It's pretty bad in there, isn't it? Yeah. This side's pretty bad. Yeah, ASAP. Um, I did brief the client like three or four grooms back, so they're very aware of it. Ah, poor guy. But yeah, uh, I would do this right away. That's, um, I helped uh, bring Meadow, Cynthia's dog, to the veterinarian to do a dental cleaning recently. Her teeth were even worse than that, and uh, it's just really important because it affects their organs because they're swallowing that daily, swallowing all that bacteria that's growing there. Sorry guys, I gotta get right in front of them here. Well, we're gonna be here all day. Maybe you can look over my shoulder.
Almost done, Brian. Just in case he's watching. Okay. We want to do ear shear. No. 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 Someone's outside the wall out here banging on the wall. I'm going to go tell him to stop. out there laughing. It was the owner, dude. He's watching YouTube. He's banging on the wall out there. He, he sat on a bench and the bench hit the wall. <laughs> I flung the door open. He's, he's like rolling. He's laughing. He's watching YouTube. He's like, oh shit. <laughs> and here comes Dee Dee. <laughs> because I'm working on his face with scissors. Right? <laughs> he's laughing. He's coming out cute though, huh? She's taking a long time. He's like, Dad's out there. I saw him. He's gonna come in any minute now. Yell at me. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, hold on. I gotta shave the inside of the ears, really. Okay, I know they're playing Snoop Doggy Dog, but come on, man. Let's, let's just get done here, okay? Hep, hep, hep. Look here, look here. Hold that ear, bring it up, and then you can kind of see where it cuts straight up. Up, up, up! All this moving, man. Gotta move the ear flap. All right, we're almost done. Get your tin blade. We'll do shave the inside of the ear one more time. Well, we didn't do it at the end, but we'll get the ear, tin blade here, shave it. Here and do this one. Hold on here. Hold on here. No, don't. Do, no, we can't do that. We're not. Can't argue. Can't be arguing here. No, no. We're not doing your ear here. Okay. We're just shaving here. Uh, uh. Let me see. Let me see. Fitzy, work with me here. Okay. Nice. Nice and clean there. This is like 30 minute face trimming here. You know that one client that you get that they're like, can you, can you be doing exactly this time? It's like sometimes it doesn't work out the way you think it's gonna work out. Dad, so dad hears you guys tell, saying the dental is for sure important. Pretty costly too sometimes, so it just depends on where you're going too. You know, it's one of those things you gotta save up for. Come in here. See how cleaning up the inside of the ear really helped the hair, helped the look and everything. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah, okay, here we go, here we go. Okay, all right, all right. Got some static, so we'll do a little bit more leave-in conditioner. And we'll do our cologne. All right. My gosh. Yes, 15, we're done. I was like, yeah, right. Let me get my scissors. <laughs> Let me get my scissors. Well, if you move, man, if you move. It's like, don't move, don't move. We're going to go on just like that. My goodness. Maru, thanks for your comments. I saw some comments earlier. I appreciate you. All right, let's take all this stuff off here. Let's put stuff, this and that. We'll be right back. Thank you guys, appreciate you. Look how cute you are. Look how cute you are. You're so cute. Yes, you are. You're so cute. Let me see. I think you have a leash and stuff here. Hold on. Let's get all this on. Yeah, here you go. Here you go. You're licking it? Okay, you know that's yours? Okay, okay. Okay, click that. Take that. All right, we'll be right back. Somebody was asking, I'm talking loud so they can hear, but somebody was asking if he was mixed with anything? I don't know. No. He's Not that you know of, right? No, he's true. We got papers. Oh, yeah, papers, too. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll see. I gotta no, tell him that. My wife keeps on wanting to try to breed him. That's why we keep on putting the teeth off. Oh, really? Yeah. So, wait. You, um, if you breed him, what, what does the teeth matter? Because you can do it all at the same time. Oh. You know, the teeth, the, the neuter. neuter and the chip all okay. the same time. That's yeah, but the more he sucks that down, man. I know. Like this. And I learned from a little old lady with the Yorkie. The, do the dog died at five years old. And I said, what was the, did you learn anything? And she says, yeah, I didn't know how important teeth were. She lost her Yorkie at five. And the teeth were bad. She never knew, no one ever told her. Uh, it was before my time with her, you know. Before my time with her, but she said she had brought them all teeth at that point. Um, how are you doing today? Did your cash check her card? Oh. Are you going to do them all in? David's over here hallucinating about Yorkie. Is it? Okay, there's a new system now. I don't know if you've noticed it at other places. It doesn't need your signature, but it's just going to go through a screen where you look at it and then uh, just hit whatever and then. Man. 
Oh, this time you did it. Weird. Okay, so here you go. If you want to tip at the top, you can. You just sign with your fingertip like usual. This is the first one I did that. That's so weird. Maybe this is a different card. MasterCard. Okay. Oh, good to go. There you go. I'll send you a check message if you Hear it? And let me go get my coffee. Well, it's not even a coffee, it's a chai. So hold on a second. So, as usual, you know, I, I've been up and down with uh, doing good about food and stuff like that. But today, all day, all I've had is two egg bites. So, David, thanks for saving me. I appreciate you. I got me a little chai coffee or a chai latte or whatever this is. Chai. It's chai. Because I am uh, trying to discontinue my coffee. And I'm doing great. And if I introduce a coffee, seems to me I get a headache. So, I had to cut all coffee. I took four days and a few migraines and I cut it off. And I do have a chai. There's a little bit of caffeine in that, but way less than what's in coffee. Um, I do need to eat. But I have a lot of energy right this second, and then when I get offline, I'll probably pass out. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So I have a lot to do. The first thing I need to do is get offline and put those harnesses on there for you. They're really, really inexpensive for something of such high quality, and you are supporting Betty Dyer, okay? So those of you who order a harness, just know you already know her quality. It's amazing. I support people who support me, especially someone like Betty. If you didn't see her video, go watch it. We made a trip to see her. She had surgery. I wanted her to know she was so important to me. The amount of the products she has sent my way and all on her own. I didn't ask her for anything at first and all of a sudden they just came pouring in and now I just make sure she has compensation for what she sends to me and gives to me and just as a great friend I had to go down there to Florida and surprise her and let her know she means a lot to me and she does. Betty you mean so much to me. Thank you for everything you've done for my business. I really appreciate you. So if you order something from Betty Dyer, she gets paid for it. I make sure I take care of Betty Dyer, okay? I would never take advantage of somebody, ever, ever. It's beyond who I am. I'm a giver. You know how you know the difference between a giver and taker? Those of you guys who are givers, you can raise your hand and say, I'm a giver. We give way beyond, way more than what we have for ourselves. It's hard for me to even keep a Christmas gift, you know what I mean? So I know you know who I'm talking to. And so I would never take advantage of somebody. So Betty Dyer, all the, the items you've sent here, everything I took back, they're all slowly getting online. And if you order a harness, she gets she gets some income for it. So thank you so much. She's a, she's great. And uh, you go watch her video, Betty Dyer. Okay, so uh, thanks, Honey Bee. I appreciate it. I wish Honey Bee could make that comment across the board on all my social media because some people just think they know me really well and I, they might have watched one video and just jumped to assumptions and that's incorrect. You shouldn't do that. Don't assume. Don't make an ass out of you and me. Okay? Don't assume. Get the facts. And um, thank you all for being here, sharing this with me. Uh, this Yorkie is fitzy. Oh gosh. So Dad was watching the whole time. And dad is watching a lot. He told me, he said, Didi, good luck on the, the remodel of the house. So I know he's watching over there too. And I said, did you write anything on the feed? He goes, uh, he goes, what do you mean? I said, right. Did you type? He goes, oh, just very little. So do you guys, did you guys see who he was? He was typing in the feed and stuff. Brenda, I mentioned it earlier. I got your package yesterday. So I, I uh, decided I probably won't open it until Christmas. Or if I do open it, I'll probably open it live. So just uh, thank you so much, Brenda. You'll have something coming your way, too. Thank you for your friendship and your love. I really appreciate it. And thank you for being a Christian sister of mine. I, I really, it means a lot to me. Okay, so you guys, so check this out. What I'm going to say. So did you hear the Yorkie I just groomed? Some of your comments were, some of your comments said, what did you say? Tell me. Some of your comments said, what else is that Yorkie mixed with, right? So the dad immediately says, no, we have papers for him. He's a Yorkie with papers. So I'm sharing information to you 
those of you who think he's mixed with something, you would have to take it up with the owner because they have papers for him being a full blood Yorkie. So they're in between right now um, in doing some breeding and so they haven't done the dental just yet because of that. So maybe dad will tell mom like, hey, we all think we need a dental here. <laughs> but it's true, they wanted to wait to do this, it, to really finalize whether they're gonna breed him or not. So breed like um, spay or neuter, dental cleaning, and get the microchip, okay? So here's my comments on those three things. One, uh, the dental's very important, and I told dad, I said, if it, meant for, if it meant the teeth could cause organ failure, the teeth would be done tomorrow, right? I didn't say it like that, but I said something else that meant that. So if it meant that there could be some kind of organ failure because of the way the teeth are, the teeth need to get done now. Then wait two or three years or two years and do the neuter. You might not decide whether or not you want to breed for another couple years. So it really depends on the owner. And we're not the owner, are we? You're not the owner. I'm not the owner. They're the owner. If you want to have a dog and you want to have your ownership, go get a dog, right? No one's going to tell you what to do, right? We can give you ideas and we can kind of give our input. But at the end of the day, we are all not the owner of Fitzy, Fitzgerald. So... It's on him, but in my opinion, I would I would definitely get the dental done ASAP, okay? And Brian, if you guys need a dental referral, please let me know. I'll send you where I know that they won't charge you, you know, $1,000 because his teeth are really in tough shape. Those puppy teeth that never fell out, that's why we do teething, teethers. Help your dog lose those puppy teeth. Don't let them sit in there with the adult teeth sticking together. Those puppy teeth stuck in there when the adult teeth grew in. So then it just started holding debris in between both teeth and that's why it's so built up in there. It's just gonna rot out both teeth, okay? So the dental cleaning to me is very, very important. I would definitely do that even if we haven't decided we were gonna go ahead and do a neuter on him. And next thing, neutering. So I've heard uh, there's controversy on everything that we do, but neutering, uh, I've heard different approaches to neutering. One, absolutely animal shelters, animal control, they want to neuter everything because they don't want, uh, they, they're picking them up off the street, especially cats. So they want to spay and neuter everything so that there's not out of control. They're, who wants to put dogs down all day long for a living? They're, that's a real job, okay? If you don't like my job, go watch that. They're going to kill 75 dogs in one shelter. How many shelters are in your city? How many get put down every, every, if you hate my job, go hate that job, okay? Because that's real. They're, they're picking up dogs off the street. Nobody wants to adopt them out. Nobody can take care of that dog for so long. It's not a no-kill shelter, and that dog, those dogs get put down. So the only way that they can control that is spare, neutering, everything that they're going to adopt out, right? That controls the population, especially cats. So I've heard, hurry up and spare, neuter the pet. Okay. I've also heard to allow a dog's, like their hormones, that kind of thing, to grow into how big that dog and how healthy that dog should be. You should let them not be spay or neutered for like a year okay, or a year and a half, especially like a pit bull where you really want all the testosterone and everything to make that dog real stout and bully looking. Let that, let that grow in like two to three years and then do a spay or neuter. Okay. So I've heard all different kinds of things. Do I believe in spay or neuter? Honestly, Saki was dropped off, so I got her, and she was intact, and she's a female. But she told me, like she let me know, every time she had a period, every time she had that cycle, she was miserable. She would mope, and she was miserable. And as much as I would have loved to have had another Saki, which I still would, as much as I wanted to do that, I saw her misery. And one year I just decided, okay, girl, I got you. We're going to, we're going to go get you spayed, get this out of you, get the system, you know, clear you out. And I think that happened about one, when she turned about like one years old, one year and a couple months, because she was miserable, really miserable. Faith, she's adopted from a rescue group. They already had her spayed. Brownie, adopted from a rescue group, already had him neutered. Okay. So it just depends on the situation. Okay. Some folks who are going to breed dogs, leave their pets intact forever, for a long time. Some people that are going to breed dogs, leave them intact until the dogs are done having babies and then they spay or neuter them. Sometimes they breeders spay or neuter them so that you don't go and multiply them and they already had their system and they're retired now, right? Now, I don't know it all. Uh, I'm just sharing with you things I've learned in my history of working with other people and other, other situations and stuff that you've told me and stuff that I've learned, okay? I'm just sharing with you. Um, 
there's something else I wanted to say maybe about the breeding. Okay, so when you have a dog that's um, not spay or neutered, and that, so, so a handful over the years, senior pets, uh, even females, but male or female pets that are not spay or neutered and they're like 15 years old, 16 years old, right? A lot of times I have experienced myself with my clients or friends or coworkers of their pets in their senior years having get, gotten like uterine cancer or the genitalia area cancer and that's because they're still intact. So in my opinion, I would definitely at some point in my dog's life, if they were not already spay or neutered, I would definitely have them spay or neutered so that we can prevent having that type of cancer pop up when animals are still intact at a very old age, okay? That's my opinion. Uh, everything's not 100%, so you might have a dog that's like 20 years old, who's walking around just fine on old Roy, you know, you know what I mean? All these things, never has a problem and he'll just die of old age. We can't predict that. But it is out there. I've seen it. That it is it's like, wow, that dog is how old and he's eating what and he doesn't have any problems? Like, wow, this, wow, crazy. But it's out there. It can happen, okay? And then, uh, so we talked about teeth. We talked about spare neuter. And there was one more thing we were supposed to talk about. My opinion on the dental, the spare neuter, and there was one more thing. I forgot what it was. Do you guys, do you guys know what I'm talking about? What was the last thing I said? I was going to give you my input on it. Okay, is anybody, microchip, okay here, about the microchip. Mary, thank you so much. The microchip, so if this pet owner was, thank you for listening, if this pet owner was waiting to go under anesthesia to put the microchip in, right? So most people, like Faith, microchipped. Brownie, microchipped. I wanna say, I, Brownie was I adopted, but he, he should have had this and this done from a rescue group, it didn't happen. He wasn't vaccinated. He wasn't. So I have to say, I have to look at the paperwork on Brownie. Saki was dropped off like at an event I was doing. No one wanted her. I took her home. She wasn't microchipped. Uh, Faith what came from that same group when it was in control of everything, and she is microchipped. So I want to say Brownie's microchipped, but I could be wrong. But that's the only reason why is it, that, that rescue group got out of hand, overwhelmed, okay? So... Most of the time, most rescue groups, you're going to have to ask, depends on how much you're paying to rescue the dog because nothing's free, is it? No, someone's paying for it or someone raised money for, to pay for it or, or someone got donations to do something with it. They usually are spay or neutered, microchipped, vaccinated, you know, all these things, okay? But not in all cases. So it depends on the rescue group you get. Most dogs are already microchipped from a rescue group. Not all, but most. Now, if you go get your dog, check this out. So it's really important to hear this part because I don't think we talk about it very often. If you, okay, I'm standing at a low cost vaccination clinic where I did toenail trims for over 10 years, every Saturday and Sunday and every now and then a different weird odd day. But every Saturday and Sunday for 10 years, I did toenail trims uh, eight to 4 p.m. on an average, um, rain, sh rain, sunshine, snow, whatever. Really, really bad days I would go for a little while, really, really bad days sometimes I wouldn't show up. but. In that mix of doing that job, I ran into people who would bring a dog they just found off the street and stand in line, and, and it was a little old lady, and she was I was just eased, I was just eavesdropping with the vet tech because I was I was not busy, so I'm just like standing there watching them work, right? And uh, I knew them all for 10 years. So this little old lady was getting vaccinations, and she goes, "I just found this dog, and I'm gonna keep this dog," and da 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 da. Well, I don't know about you guys, but back in the day. There was a system that you had to do when you found something. Do you guys know what system that is? Who knows? I'm going to tell you the system. So each state is different. I d definitely know for South Dakota, this is exactly the system, and I believe it was the system here in Texas. And it may not be something we talk about, but there's still a system, and it's in the law, okay? When you, I, when you find something, okay, not everyone does it. Okay, but when you find something, what is called lost and found, when you find money, jewelry, a watch, a wallet, um, someone's car, I mean, something you could pick up and take home if you don't just take it for yourself. If you find a dog, a cat, and take it home, okay, there's supposed to be a system that happens. 
and that system is to reach out and try to find the owner and back in the day you got to go read the laws within your city and state and I'm being serious okay usually it was like post an ad in the newspaper for 15 days running I mean, honestly like right who's gonna go I'm gonna go like just don't pick up the dog right because if you pick up the dog you're gonna run into all these problems or these tasks that you now have to take over and then not only that but you're now responsible for the health and well-being of the dog by the way did you know that okay oh man I thought the finders keepers law goes in effect no so uh, you got to check with your city and state I'm not a lawyer I'm your friend I'm a groomer I'm just telling you some things I've learned over the years you pick up a dog you're supposed to go put it in the paper for 15 days or something like that and it says you know I found a dog this is what it looks like or no you don't put that you put like I found a dog it's a female it's brown and da 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 if this seems like your dog please give me a call and then you got to do some question answer like is this your dog what is it where's the mole on it where's the mole on it you know what I mean because it could be anybody that wants to just take that dog and by the way there are people that go roam the streets to pick up dogs and cook them okay I'm not kidding you it's just different cultures that we have everywhere across the world some people do eat dog okay so you're supposed to do that 15 day process or whatnot well this little old lady is standing here at this uh, veterinarian clinic getting the vaccinations for this dog she just picked up and so I'm eavesdropping and I just I'm standing there watching them do the vaccinations and I asked her I said I said did you do a like a paper or did you do a paper article did you try to find the owners did you do anything to try to find the owners nowadays they have like puppyfind.com they have places where you can Craigslist where you can say are anyone missing your dog right but very rarely people are actually still doing it every once in a while I'll see an ad and very rarely are we really seeing that but there are some people that are proactive about putting them out there on your next door app your community applications or just simply that picture on a poll but usually the picture on the poll is somebody doing what has anyone seen my dog right has anyone seen my cat so this little old lady says oh no she goes I'm, I'm not she said which is I disagree she says to me absolutely not I'm not giving this dog back to the owners it, they obviously didn't want the dog if the dog was running the street so I said did you at least check for a microchip and she goes no no I'm not checking for a microchip so here we are I'm standing here next to the vet tech the vet tech's doing her job by giving the vaccinations this lady paid for if that dog had a microchip do you think that that lady cares no she doesn't care she's not gonna check for a microchip not everyone is like that but even this little old lady was somebody I, I looked at like wow not everyone is like that either okay so if you put a microchip in your dog don't think that it's a guarantee you'll get your dog back if your dog got out of the fence or, or got stolen so in my opinion the microchip does help especially let's just say you're gonna ac actually make a move to Hawaii where a microchip is required but if you're going to make a move to Hawaii where a microchip is required, they require certain types of microchips. So just wait before you do that microchip. However, there are some people who will go get a microchip scan to see because they picked up this dog off the street and they went and microchipped and then you will show a name. Okay. And there's also just a, such a little thing, a collar and a name tag. And I recommend at this time, I'll tell you on my dog's collars and their name tag, right? the name tag has their name my phone number because because my address may change I move a lot so my name my phone number and the the simple phrase um, reward with the exclamation so I recommend you put that on your tags I sell some really awesome tags they're only 10 bucks they get engraved they're an Australian brand called Red Dingo I've been I've been selling their products for a very long time because I believe in it and their name tags are so strong that even a pit bull will not chew through it you know those little cheap name tags where it starts to fade after two years or your dog can actually like Saki because she can actually pull it up in her mouth and chew the rabies tag in half which she's done she can't chew through this tag and it's only 10 bucks out there for you I believe it depends on the size but it's engravable I recommend the word reward because if someone picks up your dog it doesn't necessarily mean I'm gonna give you a hundred dollars I might give you a dollar I might give you five dollars I might give you dinner I might give you but you get a reward so in someone's head if I picked up your dog and the and the collar stayed intact now a dog can go running through some debris and the collar gets jerked off right likely a dog that has a collar that gets jerked off it's very it's kind of rare 
um, Blue can say, Blue can, Blue Cheryl, you can attest that a dog's collar with the tag can actually get stuck in a vent and a dog can actually get uh, strangled from their own collar. So if a dog's running around, that's why with cats that are stray or cats that are not stray, but outdoor cats, they have a clippable. It clips off when it's, when it's uh, jerked onto a tree, it'll just break. It'll break free, but then there's no collar on the cat, okay? Anyways, you see what I'm saying, right? You want to make sure you have a collar and a dog tag. And that dog tag saying the word reward means to me more than a microchip. Uh, but the only downfall is nothing's 100%. So somebody could get your dog and microchip scan it. With any veterinarian, it's usually free. So if you pick up a dog, you can first go to the veterinarian, any veterinarian, just pull in and say, hey, can you do a microchip scan for free for me? And that way, that'll pop up uh, the last known person that's registered under that microchip. And then the next thing you do is a collar with the tag that says name, phone number, and the word reward. Because then you might get your dog back. If someone knew that they were going to get money, right? Someone that stole your dog would be more likely, well, I want $1,000. Well, okay, but bring my dog back. And when you show up, I'm going to have the cops there. You know what I mean? At least you get your dog back. Uh, very rarely we do we get our dogs back. Any dog can run and get out of your fence. I can tell you that because Saki and Faith, man, I was recording them. David and I were watching them like a hawk. They would just tag team it and dig, 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 dig until they got out. That's when I learned I don't let them run in and out of the doggy door when I'm at work anymore. It's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. I might not see them again. So it took two times where my dad was like, Didi, your dogs are running outside your front of your house. And I was like, oh, crap. You know, like, I got to stop this now. So I don't trust them alone without a, an adult supervision. All right. So much information. I don't know how many of you guys are still out there, but you can't even get this information in one place usually, right? So we shared a lot about what happened with this Yorkie and what the dad says about microchip, spay or neuter, and the dental. So I think this is really helpful. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you know how much this means to me that you're listening and that you do care and you want to know this kind of knowledge for your pets or people around you. Or you're just like hanging out with me because you have no pets and you just want to support us. I really appreciate it. So thanks a lot for being here. I really appreciate you guys. Be sure to shop at myfavoritegroomer.com. I need to get over there and put those harnesses on online for you guys. They're so affordable. I only have a handful, a little bit more than a handful, okay? And definitely the sizing is a little off. When you think extra, extra large, it's not for a pit bull. These are sized for small dogs. Um, the one we put on this Yorkie was a medium. Okay, so just understand that you saw the Yorkie's body was like this big. So understand that these are, these are designed for small dogs. Leashes and collars, they're going to be sized for all dogs, right? Large, small, medium, extra large, that kind of thing. Uh, we are having a huge sale on our clothing, so make sure you pick up some clothing. We're trying to get rid of all the clothing, so you'll see markdowns coming through all the way through. And don't forget the Andis uh, two-speed clipper is extremely lowly marked, so pick that up if you need a clipper. And uh, pick up your dog upstand at dogupstand.com. All right, let's kind of look real quick. Okay, honeybee, you'll get the prayer, you'll get the PJ prayer time tonight. Okay, so just make sure you check back at like eight, nine, and ten p.m. I'm gonna cross my fingers. What time is it now? I got three hours to do work. What about I gotta paint this house? All right, so real quick, uh, let's look at. Did I miss anything? Major questions? Donna Denunzio, I'm really sorry about your your health issues. Thanks for sharing. Oh. Me and You Gaming wants me to introduce, I haven't put it on, I don't want to talk about it right now, David, because um, I don't have time to put them online. But for the men out there, I am now carrying the Squatch Soap, okay? Dr. Squatch Soap. So if you're a man, and I don't care if, if you don't have to be a man because I personally bought the shampoo for myself because it's more of like an essential oil, soap, and shampoo. And I'm going to do a video about it to make sure I really loved it or not. But I can tell you right now the smell. This is a Bay Rum. I'm now carrying this because I have so many gifts for women, you know, purses and stuff like that. I had to get something for men. And, and I really wanted David to try it all out too, because it's like an all, it's all natural. Made from five natural oils, no harsh chemicals, handcrafted, and please recycle. So this is all about the kind of way I think. All right, so I started carrying the Squatch brand. I'm, I'll probably put it under the gift section, just kind of put a, a vague 
listing until I can get the pictures on there. And I'll just kind of say, hey, in the notes, check out. When you check out, put the notes of which one you want, at least that you'll be able to get them. There's these, and there's like a soap dish, and there's like a soap thing so you don't drop your soap. I mean, I drop my soap all the time. And anyway, check out the soap for men, okay? For women, I'm going to use it because it's essential oils. Hello. Okay, let's see here. All right. Let me see here. Oh, what did Mary say? I don't know what she said. Anyway, I was just kind of scrolling. Ariel, happy birthday. We sung you happy birthday earlier. All right. I appreciate you guys. Thanks a lot for being here. I'm kind of scanning here real quick. Okay. Do, 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 do. I think I'm good. I'm sorry if I missed anything. I really care about you guys. Did I miss any donations or anything? Anybody know? I don't think I did. Okay. That way I could get the singing and all that. Okay. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you. We will see you tonight for PJ prayer time. So don't forget, you might not get a notification. So just be sure to check the dashboard at youtube.com slash my favorite groomer. It'll stay like live right there. All right. Love you guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Do 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 do